Welcome back to Einstein's Eyes, everyone. I'm Carl Rosen, Oculoplastics Neuro-Ophthalmology in Anchorage, Alaska at Ophthalmic Associates. And I'm with my co-host, friend, and former co-resident uh, from Albert Einstein, John Ditkoff. John? Hi, all. I'm a general ophthalmologist. My name is John Ditkoff. I specialize in cornea, and I practice in northern New Jersey, about 20 minutes out of the city. And uh, as Carl said, it's really nice for us to work together still. We worked together when we were little kids doing our residency at Albert Einstein. Hence, uh, we came up with the idea for this YouTube channel, Einstein's Eyes. And uh, today's topic, I'm really interested to learn about because I don't know much about it. Uh, so go go at it, Carl. Yeah, I've been interested in this topic. I've been following this. And Elon Musk's really wondrous idea that he's bringing to market is really half, half of you out there, don't be spitting at the camera right now just because we used right. the word Elon Musk. You know, right. Don't. He's really a builder. He's really just a, you is, know, an engineer that we haven't seen in, in yeah, This centuries. is only good. This is the only good stuff. But I'm talking specifically about Neuralink, the new blind sight brain chip. Imagine being blind. You go into surgery and after a two-hour procedure, you have a chip placed into your occipital cortex where your visual system interprets vision. And you can you wake up and you see pixels, you see something, you see images, and that's where we're starting from. It's called Blindsight. It was recently FDA approved as a breakthrough device status, fast tracking trials for total blindness, and you don't even need a retina or an eye or an optic nerve. You just need your visual cortex. Before we really dive into Blindsight, I want to talk about Neuralink in general, how it began. It was founded in July of 2016 by Elon Musk and eight neuroscientists and engineers. Their, their goal was really to treat severe neurological disorders. This was a moonshot. It's Star Trekian. It's, it's, you know, it's outside the box. 2019, he unveiled a white paper with key hardware. This is the image of the coin-sized N1 implant that talks to the outside world. It's implanted. The electrodes, the thread-like electrodes are implanted in your brain. The outside world is interfaced with over Bluetooth. The current model is 64 ultra-thin polymer threads, each about four to six microns wide, carrying 1,024 electrodes. These flexible threads aim to reduce scarring, and they raise the channel count to tenfold over prior legacy Utah arrays, which were a former implant. This is the machine that implants those electrodes. You make a two sonometer skull window, and this device called the R1 uses a 25 micron tungsten rhenium needle to pierce the pia matter, which is a layer over the brain, and bury each thread several millimeters into the cortex. It's called layer five. Now that was the first patient, Nolan Arba. And Nolan was a 30-year-old quadriplegic, uh, I believe from a diving accident. And after this implant, he was able to play civilization. He couldn't move his arms or legs, but he used the Bluetooth brain to move a cursor on a computer. Amazing. Changed his life. And this is the device that implanted those electrodes. Now, the second patient, Neuralink, learned that the brain's movements and the brain does move. And if you've ever done a craniotomy, which I know most of you haven't, but I had the good fortune of training in at Allegheny General with Jack Kennerdell and his close friend Joe Maroon as a fellow, as a neuroophthalmic surgical fellow, privilege of being in the operating room with the neurosurgical attendings and residents. When you looked at a brain that was exposed via craniotomy, you could see that the brain pulsates. And when these fine threads were in the brain. They had no idea of knowing that or they could move and disinsert just from brain movements. As the CSF, as the cerebrospinal fluid sloshes around and covers the brain material. So on the second patient, we'll just say Alex, they discovered this, they made deeper insertions. The third patient was Brad Smith. He has, he was an ALS patient, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis patient, done it recently. He was the first nonverbal user and now he can type and he edits videos with the cursor that he moves mentally. And essentially, this is telepathy. The key lessons learned from these three patients so far with the brain implants is that brain micromotion is real. 
and that software can compensate for lost electrodes, but future hardware must secure the threads better and perhaps add strain relief coils. A probe is going in the brain. I mean, this device is going in the brain and without using your hands or any motor control, you're able to control a computer or or do things that normally you would use your hands for. Is that that's, the that's idea? Correct. And, and your brain, okay. Thanks. And that's, that's via Bluetooth technology. That's a little background on Neuralink. Let's switch focus to the topic at hand, blind sight. Now in the blind, the eyes and the optic nerves may be irreparable from a stroke, an infection, a trauma. But if the visual cortex is intact, and that's the back of the head, the occipital lobe lives, where vision is interpreted. Which is the majority of people with blindness. Exactly. Very high majority. Neuralink will use the same thread technology just over the V1 cortical area to cause pixelated images. And these pixelated images will create a perception. Now, the FDA granted breakthrough device status 2025, just recently, clearing the way for the first human trials later this year. How does it differ from prior retinal implants? Now, retinal prostheses have been around. One is called the Argus II, and they sit on top of the retina, and they rely on intact optic nerves, and that's where blind sight is entirely different. You don't need an optic nerve. You don't even need an eye. You can be anophthalmic, or you could have end-stage retinitis pigmentosa. Neuralink's blind sight implant will still help you. And as I mentioned, the surgery is performed by a, a musk-built robot, which inserts these hair-thin threads with micro-precision, avoiding blood vessels so you don't get a brain bleed. That's very important. That was part of the technology. Now, obviously, preoperatively, you need an MRI to map the brain. You need an OCT to assess the ocular anatomy as well. These are all pre-op uh, measurements. Postoperatively, you're going to need visual rehabilitation. Neuroophthalmologists come into play and teach patients to read these pixelated constellation images. We also need to monitor for seizures, and there will be tweaking of stimulation maps. I do want to read what Elon Musk said on X. Musk explained that blindsight, that the blindsight device from Neuralink will enable even those who have lost both eyes and their optic nerve to see provided the visual cortex is intact. It will even enable those who have been blind from birth to see for the first time. Here's the part that really expands the horizon of what we think vision can be. At first, the, the vision will be low resolution, the, the pixelated images I mentioned, like Atari graphics, but eventually it has the potential to be better than natural vision, supervision. You will be able to see infrared, ultraviolet, even radar wavelengths like Geordi LaForge from Star Trek. Pretty crazy. So what I'm having trouble understanding is, so imagine someone's had vision their whole life and they use their eye and their optic nerve and their retina to see. Is this device connected to some type of camera? When you're walking down the street with this device implanted, how does it work? Like so it's that's a great question, John. That's implanted a great question. in your cortex. It is connected to a camera. Okay, yeah. It is, yes. So the it cortex... Is. So the camera's giving it these images. Maybe they're not images like we're used to, but they're images, some type of image that the, that this is interpreting. Is that the idea? Yes, it, yes, it's, yes. It's, that's exactly right. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, it is connected to a camera, and then it gets transferred to the visual cortex in the occipital pole. Now, I did want to give you a sense of what this will look like. But ideally, you would think they don't even need to do surgery. Like, they could implant it outside the brain well, there, there, there is another company that's looking at that. I don't know. Yeah. Where, you, where somehow it would transmit to the visual cortex from there. Right, right. But this is this or maybe seems, just a little probe goes in, you know, like that kind of thing. Right. Uh, but, I mean, to date, though, yeah, this is the most extraordinary technology that is out there with data that you can look at and analyze. Those other technologies are still awaiting evaluations and for data analysis. So this is sort of the images that you'll get initially, and then uh, just to give you an idea, and then it'll get gradually better and better as the technology improves. But again, you're talking about someone who sees nothing. So who qualifies? Neuralink has 
qualifications that are ages 18 to 65 with profound bilateral blindness, greater than or equal to three years, an intact visual cortex verified by functional MRI or magnetic resonance imaging, no uncontrolled epilepsy, epilepsy, a coagulopathy or neurodegenerative disorders. This is for blindness, not for the paralysis aspect and a willingness to undergo intensive rehabilitation and device updates. There are risks and ethics and costs associated with this. You know, the surgery can cause an infection, just like any surgery, a hemorrhage, meningitis, or seizures. The technology can cause electrofibrosis, signal loss, battery or firmware failures, and that's all going to improve with time. There's the ethics involved, the ethics of supervision. I mean, you know, could you imagine the military wanted to use this to see at night? You know, enhancement, super soldiers, cost, initially anywhere from 50000 to 90000 Retinal implants are 150000 now with rehabilitation. So that's not out of the question. The big picture to takeaways is blind sight is a moonshot. There's a huge upside for optic nerve level blindness and retinal blindness, but we're most likely years from mainstream clinics. For ophthalmologists and neuro-ophthalmologists, though, I would just have a call to action. I would say, hey, stay informed on trial criteria. Collaborate with neuro teams if that is available to you or, or presents itself. And guide your patients away from inflated expectations. But I'll just ask you, John, what do you think? It's exciting. I mean, it really is. I'm thinking of patients that I've unfortunately watched them go blind in both eyes. And I'm excited for them to be able to regain some vision. And I mean... One of my patients just recently, I had a 32-year-old lady. She has a second optic nerve now. Four years later, she's lost vision. Someone like her, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not even in five or 10 years, but 15 or 20 years away, she can, she can have hope that she'll regain function again. That's the key, John, hope. Yeah. And if Elon Musk can give you hope with this device, that's great. If you guys like this, please subscribe, share, like. Great having you here, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks a million. Good seeing you, John.